there's more pressure on our budgets than ever before to make sure that every dollar is as effective as possible. So how can we be smarter in the ways that we're activating those dollars? Thank you for bringing it home with me. So um, we've heard, we heard Jeff talk a lot today, and Christy as well, about innovation and partnerships. I'd love for you each to take a moment and share with us a bit about your roles, and then also how, in what way you're focused on innovation and your partnerships at this moment. Diego, do you want to start? I'll start. So I think everyone has a pretty good idea what CVS is, right? But you think about it as the corner drugstore. We think about it from an enterprise perspective, right? So retail pharmacy, uh, benefits management, Aetna as an insurance company, and now with our acquisition of, of Signify in, in Oak Street, in-home and brick and mortar um, delivery of health services. So complicated business, and I think innovation helps us understand um, how are we smarter about the things that we're doing there, how do we engage with the right folks? Um, but also, I think identity has been a conversation today. How do we think about bringing those connections together within the enterprise and allow us, I think, to fulfill the promise of what CBS Health was supposed to be, which is bringing all of those data sets together to help you on that path in, the, in those moments of health. Yeah. I love that. And Marcy, curious for uh, you. Yeah, so my job at UM is to oversee integrated investment for the CVS account and a handful of others. And the majority of what I do is tied to partnerships. And innovation is incredibly important because the industry and the landscape is becoming so much more complicated and fragmented, as Jeff was saying earlier, that it's important that we evolve in order to keep pace with the consumer and how they're behaviors are changing, as well as the industry and how the capabilities and technology is changing. And we lean on our partnerships because they're really the ones that are helping to develop and evolve those capabilities in that technology. And so they're helping us sort of connect to what the, the client's business challenges are, who the consumer is, how they're evolving, and then how can we ultimately connect with them in the, in the most relevant ways. Yeah. And so um, it's worth pointing out uh, that IPG CVS Health and the Trade Desk have been partners for years. So this is a long-standing partnership, sort of a triumvirate represented on this stage. I'm curious to know, I mean, in the last six years, programmatic and the way everyone is partnering has evolved, I think, rapidly. And I'm curious, Diego, from your perspective, like how has that partnership changed and your, you know, your media strategy along with it? Yeah, I think one of the interesting things that we looked at is there was always a linear relationship between the brand, the agency, and the, and the technology partner. And I think um, being so far away from the technology partner wasn't helping us kind of fulfill the, the stuff that we were trying to do. So I think, again, to the triumphant comment that you made, it's just like, how do we get everyone at the table at the same time, shared accountability in the things that we're trying to build? So as we think about the, the things that we're trying to create, um, from an efficiency perspective as we think about talking to the right folks, delivering that right message, um, you know, how do we build those capabilities together, especially as we think about um, the data insights that we have relative to the data that we have available to us, right? So we can pull those insights to make us really smart about the audiences that we talk to, but then where the rubber hits the road is finding those right folks at the right cost, at the right time, and contextually, what else can we add in that situation to create that message and make it even more relevant? Can I ask just a quick follow-up? How, do how does that work? How do you bring everyone a little bit closer, a little more leaned in, closer to the business in a, in a partnership like this? Yeah, I mean, we've created a direct relationship and a direct partnership with, with the trade desk, right? So yeah. we have that direct line of sight and that direct connection from, a, from again, from a joint business perspective, mm -hmm. right? And uh, as I think about Marcy and, and the team that's back at, at IPG and, and UM, those are the folks that are hands-on keyboard, right? So those are the folks that are seeing every day what's happening in, in, in the space and how we're, how we're engaging, right? So we, we have those conversations. We iterate and we, and we um, ideate around what's the next innovative thing that we want to do. And as, again, as we think about the data sets that we can bring to that conversation, helping us to get smarter in, in, in those areas. So it's purposeful, right? You need to kind of create a, an environment and a situation where everyone has the ability to contribute to that shared goal that we have, again, in making that consumer experience better and easier when it comes to healthcare. Yeah, and skin in the game. Marcy, I'm curious, your perspective, you know, kind of coming from the agency side, how are you 
thinking about driving innovation in partnerships as you bring people together. It comes down to sort of understanding what our business, our clients' business challenges are, and then thinking about the best ways to solve them. In a lot of cases, that is going to be looking at new and innovative ways because we have to constantly be finding smarter ways. There's more pressure on our budgets than ever before to make sure that every dollar is as effective as possible. So how can we um, be smarter in the ways that we're activating those dollars? And what I think has been really unique about CVS. You know, programmatic at the end of the day is, is really just automated buying, and you can do it to the most basic degree, or you can take advantage of all of the different capabilities. And I think what CVS has done um, in partnership with us is really take it that next step further. And whether that is through DCO, different types of targeting, you know, contextual audiences, et cetera, um, they're really thinking about it in really smart and innovative ways, more so than I think a lot of other clients are. And the Trade Desk has really helped us to unlock what are those new use cases. Again, sometimes based on, and, and Diego I think is going to share a case study in a bit, um, about a business opportunity that they had in a really unique way that you know, only a, a programmatic partner could help us bring it to life. And so I think that's been really great. And what's important is having really an ongoing dialogue. It's not about just having QBRs and, and checking in periodically throughout the year. It's, being able to pick up the phone and, and us you know, giving the trade desk a call to ask a question based on a conversation we had and a new challenge that was posed, or vice versa, the trade desk picking up the phone and calling us to say, hey, you know, we've got this great new capability that we think could deliver um, and help resolve this, this problem or achieve this solution for you. It's that ability to have that ongoing dialogue that I think helps us also be more nimble and, and act with speed. And I think just to add to that too is it's, for us, it's not innovation for innovation's sake, right? It's, it's, the, the consumer is at the center and the heart of what we're trying to do. So we're looking for innovation that's going to make it easier for them to engage with us, make healthcare more accessible to them. So how can we bring that to them and, and, and be there at, at, at that moment where they, where they need us? So we try to filter the innovation away from the shiny and more towards the purposeful and the, and the utility that, that innovation can bring. Yeah, I, I appreciate that you said that because I think innovation is one of those things that's become such a buzzword. Mm -hmm. Innovation, it, let's sprinkle mm -hmm. some innovation on it. But what do we really mean by that? And Diego, I know you have a really interesting example from the Minute Clinic um, with CVS Health about how you've kind of, you know, through this partnership have been able to really use data to drive results for all. Um, can you dig into that uh, with us a little bit? Yeah, happy to. So mental health, right? It's, it's not a surprise. Uh, 70 million plus folks out there require some kind of mental health services, you know, uh, made more aggravated by, by the pandemic. Um, but as we come out of those, uh, at those times, three quarters of the providers that provide mental health services are just not taking new patients which then puts folks in a, in a world where a third of people that are looking for those services have to wait a week or more to be able to, to, to get the services and the support that they need. That was our insight, right? That was, the, that was the, 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 the issue to solve. And the way that we looked at it was, we can bring data that helps us understand at the location of where folks are searching, do I have availability? And is the availability now? Is the availability tomorrow? Or is the availability a few days from now, which means I can now send you either from a brick and mortar situation or to a virtual care situation, right? So that helped us, again, be as accessible and as relevant as possible in a really key time of need. But bringing data, bringing the platform that allowed us to kind of uh, activate against, against that data, the management of the agency, and making sure, again, that we are continuing to find the right audience is at the right cost. It still needs to be a cost-effective world for us. But at the end of the day, from a results perspective, nine out of 10 of the folks that engaged with us, we were able to get them an appointment that day or the, ne or the next day. So we really solved the issue of it can't take a week. It needs yeah. to be today or tomorrow. And, and data and technology and the activation thereof helped us, helped us do that. Yeah. And I was blown away. I, I shared with you earlier today, I was blown away to see a stat that during the pandemic, the number of people who reported that they were depressed went from 11% to 40 something percent. Yeah. And so the need was so great. And as you mentioned, it hasn't gone away. I think what was interesting about this example was the flexibility of the creative, you know, sort of the ability to like real time understand, was there an appointment available today, tomorrow, or within a week? I w Marcy, I wonder if you can talk about, you know, sort of how you were able to connect creative and strategy there. And any, I don't know, any surprises or any learnings that came out of it that you think other brands might be able to learn from? I, I think it was 
somewhat of a seamless process. I think one of the benefits of this in, in how we worked with the trade desk, we didn't have to do as complex of a DCO mapping process as, as we typically do, although I think it was maybe three or four different unique messages. It wasn't the thousand that sometimes you can have. Um, so I think in that regard, it was a little bit easier to execute. I don't want to, nothing's easy, and I, and I don't think putting, pulling a lot of groups together internally on the CVS side probably was easy. But I think we had, at the same time, another, uh, the, same, the same campaign working without that level of targeting and messaging. So we were able to see at the end what were some of the learnings and what performed better than others so that we could implement that again in the future. Yeah, yeah I think the other piece I was really, so that was, let's think about that as, as outward facing, right? So it's, 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 What's happening in, in what's happening out in the marketplace? What message do I need to deliver? What was really interesting about this this situation, this partnership as well, is we were also then able to take those signals coming in. So what was happening in what market relative to the message that was being delivered to give us a sense of what our capacity challenges were, and that information, that data can now be fed back inside the organization to the field, and how do we think about? supporting the places where the demand is high but our capacity is low and how do we adjust for that to again to be able to deliver on that on that core goal which was the the campaign in the first place that's so interesting not just using the data not just to drive revenue outcomes but to really help streamline operations and and staffing um, i want to talk about kpis and i know that there's no way to liven up a party like <laughs> uttering those three letters but every marketer i know um, has been focused on growth and i think that that's been true for years and increasingly efficiency i think that word has come up at least twice just in this conversation right now um, given the scrutiny that budgets are under. I wonder how many in the audience would put themselves in that bucket of caring about growth and efficiency, maybe more than ever at this moment. What's the measure of an effective uh, you know, media and uh, marketing investment at CVS? How, how are you determining that right now? Um, it's not easy, right? We have 9,500 stores. Um, if you think about it, 90 plus percent of our conversions happening in, in a store versus a digital environment. So the connection between the digital message and the conversion is broken. Mm -hmm. So that, that makes it really challenging for us to be able to understand kind of the efficacy of those investments. Luckily, um, lots of smarter folks than, than I, we created an internal capability around analytics that we have very sophisticated modeling capabilities, again, not once a year, set it and forget it, but on a quarterly basis, uh, at the publisher level, at the channel level, in many cases at the audience level, that gives us a real sense of kind of what's working. In the marketplace though, the things that we have found from a correlation perspective of, of where the levers we can push and pull without affecting negatively the business results that come later is, is the fundamental ones that we've all grown up with. Reach, frequency, and, and viewability. And, and from an optimization perspective, if we nail those three things, and as we think about viewability, getting even smarter about the context upon which that ad is being delivered, not just the fact that it's viewable, but is it in a really cluttered environment? You know, what else is happening on that page to understand the, the quality of that viewability? That's where we've continued to play and we're trying to continue to involve more in that direction. Marcy, I wonder if you would agree with those three and also your observations on how the balance between them has maybe shifted over time. Yeah, no, I do agree with those three in terms of media KPIs that can ultimately correlate to the types of conversions that a client needs. But you mentioned efficiency earlier, and I think that's an important word because I think there's a lot of different ways to measure efficiency. And efficiency on just you know people two plus CPM is certainly one metric. But one of the things that we've been looking at from a CVS standpoint and a few other clients is you can look at efficient reach, you can look at efficient on-target percent. And that's one of the things that we've been exploring and, and starting to, I would say, be on test, but sort of activate is buying more of our CTV programmatically so that we can manage holistic frequency across the plan. And while, you know, I think Jeff said it really well earlier, decisioning costs money, but ultimately to paying for that decisioning is meaning that we're delivering more efficient reach by rooting out the waste, the overexposure of reaching the same person 10 times, which we also know is a very bad user experience in the CTV space, or using it to um, find the right audiences and make sure that every dollar is really going to that audience that's most likely to convert. And so efficiency in that case, it might be an efficient cost per reach point and an efficient on target CPM. And so those are some of the changes that we've made and ultimately how we're hoping to deliver more effectiveness in the, yeah. in the long run. I like that term too, efficient reach, as yeah, a way of kind of balancing both. Diego, I, I, can you talk just for a minute about 
sort of the growth curve that CVS Health is on. And you know, I know that there's been, there was at one point an emphasis on real estate and sort of expanding the footprint of the brand. Um, now it seems, you know, I'm noticing more marketing from the company. How is marketing driving the business right now? And how do you think about measurement and budget? Yeah, I mean, I've had a front row seat, so I've been there 12 years, and when I started, we were, from an advertising perspective, a print circular organization, right? Mm -hmm. Lots of ads in the Sunday paper to, here's what's on sale. To the point now, we're not in the print business anymore, and everything has moved into, into digital, into search, uh, in, into video, and it took us a while to get there, right? Because the, the, the DNA of the organization was growing by real estate at another store on that corner, or by acquisition, again, as you think about it from the enterprise perspective. Now the business has turned, and, and because they have a greater belief um, in, in uh, the efficacy of marketing and they be able to drive incremental value to the business. Lots of people, we get five million people into our stores every day. It can't be about taking credit for those five million. They were coming anyway. I gotta show them the five million in one, right? And being able to get to the point where finance, of all people, believe that um, and give us the, the ability to invest in those ways and continue to expand the mix of how we invest to follow the consumer patterns mm -hmm. and the engagement patterns that, that we see. I mean, CTV and, and, and streaming is, is a great example of that, right? I still play a lot in the linear space because part of my audience is older from a pharmacy perspective. But I play a lot in the streaming space because I'm also my front store audience and my tomorrow's audience is in that space and how do I continue to kind of balance those investments in a way that continue to show the value of those investments to finance so they can continue to kind of, you know, fund and feed the kitty moving forward. Yeah, I could say, I hadn't even thought of that before, but the, the extra onus on you to go multi-channel, you know, given, given who your uh, client is, uh, who your customer is. So we've got just a couple minutes and I want to end on a, forward focus note. And I'm curious how each of you would answer this question. Marcy, I'll start with you. Uh, so as we look ahead to the future, what do you see as the biggest opportunity ahead of us, either at UM or as an industry? Uh, th I th that was a tough one and I thought about it a little bit. I'm curious about your answer. <laughs> Um, I would like to see a lot of the capabilities that were discussed today and that we're exploring for, um, for CVS expanded into the linear TV space. I, I'm one of the, the people maybe that doesn't think that TV is dying, but I do think that it is changing in the way that it's connecting with consumers and there's a frequency problem there and all of the technology that's been built in CTV to help manage for that, I would love to see in the linear space. It's For me, I think even there's still some value in spill, so it's not just about being able to hone in on the right audience, but being able to hone in on the right audience effectively and again, make every dollar work for you. So that's something I would, I would love to see evolved. Love it. I would support that. Um, I, think, I think mine is around the space of the concern I have as, an, as, a, as a brand that uses a lot of, of my own data as I think about um, not only activation, but also just being intelligent about what we do, um, is, the, is the fragmentation of the privacy policies that are, that are, that are out there. Yeah. Right, and building to the lowest common denominator, I think to a degree, sometimes brings us back to where we were maybe many years ago, and now the technology and the growth that we've had in the digital space kind of goes away because we're being legislated in that, in that back into that corner. I, I think from an innovation perspective is, you know, is there a partner like the Trade Desk that can help us understand, again, in that impression that I'm delivering in that geography that has a specific implication relative to the usage of data, how can we catch that in the moment? So I'm not necessarily building multiple audiences for multiple things. I still have my core audience, but as I activate and I go to market, where can that filter be there to keep, keep us all out of jail? I think is the, is, is the <laughs> ultimate goal. Love it. On that note, I just want to say thank you both so much for taking the time to share your insights today and sort of give a picture about how these three pieces can come together. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you all. Thank you guys. <laughs>